so we are good. From the Mecca of Mixed Martial Arts, Las Vegas, Nevada, this is the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. I'm Joey Barner, joining me as always, my partners in crime, Phil Devine, Billy Mira, Heidi Fang, and special in-studio guest host. He was the IFL welterweight champ of the world. He was the Bellator welterweight tournament champion. He's a UFC vet. He's a fighter turned stunt man. The thoroughbred Jay Haran is in the right corner. I've, I've never, I've never oh, seen, <laughs> I've never seen anyone take get a hit by a bus like I've seen. <laughs> you know what killed that though was it's Armando was, Armando was like ten seconds late with my round of applause. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it is Friday. I've been waiting for this day since Monday, but I'm not feeling it today. I'm not feeling it for a few reasons. First of all, Tuesday was my day. I thought summer was here. I was rocking flip-flops and shorts. I don't know if I pissed off the Las Vegas weather gods. And they, you know, they had to teach me a lesson because now it's raining. I see snow on the mountains. I got to wear shoes and a jacket. It's like weather. It's like, uh, uh, it's like weather. It's like winter weather. Bipolar. It was for a loop a little bit. Yeah, I'm not ready for that. Also, the other reason I'm not feeling this Friday, there's no MMA this weekend. No fights. I don't no know what to fights. do. I'm a crackhead for this stuff. I'm not going to be lying. I'm itching and twitching. I'm scratching and feeding. I'm like, I need some MMA, man. Yeah, there's no MMA this week, man. I don't know what's going on. But later on the show, we'll have a phone interview with UFC welterweight Jake Ellenberger. He'll be taking on former Strike Force welterweight champ Nate Marquardt next weekend at UFC 158. Also, yesterday, we had a sit down with UFC bantamweight Scotty Jorgensen and Uriah Faber to talk about their upcoming main event fight at the Ultimate, Ultimate Fighter 17 finale as well as getting all the latest breaking MMA news and inside stories from our very own Heidi Fang and Heidi's Hit List. But first, let's look back at this past week's MMA action. Last Tuesday night, we had episode 7 from season 17 of The Ultimate Fighter. And for the third week in a row, the upsets, they keep on coming. Team Jones' first draft pick, the number one guy they chose, Clint Hester, taken out in the first round by Jimmy Clinton, excuse me, in the first round of the tournament, but in the second round of the fight by Jimmy Kinlan via rear naked choke. Phil, I never want to question a man's heart, especially when he makes his living fighting as a professional mixed martial artist. But the end of that fight was suspect. I don't know, on the outside looking in, you tell me, did it look like Clint quit? I don't know if Clint quit, but I think you really saw what was going to happen when they were talking to John Jones earlier in the fight, uh, earlier in the episode, and he was talking about the one issue that we may see with Clint Hester, and that was his cardio. And I think after trying so, so hard to, to try to get, uh, you know, up off the ground, defending it, I mean, you saw the way this guy hits. He hits hard. He's a tough dude. There's no question about that. But the cardio was an issue. I think he was just too. You think gassed, it was the done. cardio? I do. I think because he was too I, done. I thought he blew it in the second round by coming out and trying to wrestle. You know, well, it, it was that that was he he did blow it. Yeah, he he made a mistake. But I think once he was down on the ground, it was that's it. He's got nothing left. He was off. It was no cardio left. Yeah, you know, it's it's rare in a mixed martial arts when you see the person, the wrestler, who takes the, the aggressive stance, who actually controls the top game, lose the round. And that's exactly what I thought, and, and Chael, the, the, the opposing coach, thought of the first round of that fight. I thought that, you know, being on bottom and defending against the tape, I thought Clint still won the round. He did so much damage. He hit so hard from such weird angles. He generated so much power. I mean, he literally beat the hell out, out, out of the body of Jimmy Kinlan from, from, from is it Kinlan or Quinlan? Quinlan. Quinlan, okay. I'm nice sorry, Irish Quinlan. boy from Boston. Yeah, Quinlan. Um, <laughs> out of Jimmy Quinlan. 
uh, that, that whole first round from bottom or from being pressed against the fence. Yeah, he was landing some devastating elbows, and you could just hear it through the gym. You could hear the thuds from every shot that he threw. Definitely impressive the way he landed that those power shots from, like you said, Joey, awkward angles from weird positions. Uh, but yeah, you know, that was the classic grappler versus striker, and you know, Quinlan was not going to be denied that takedown, was not going to be denied the grappling. He just kept pressing forward and doing what he had to do. But I think the best part of, of my favorite part of the episode was seeing the interaction between the two of them leading up to the fight. And yeah. on fight day, I thought that was such a cool thing because you had uh, Hester had eaten out of his bowl, and Quinlan was like, yo, did you just eat out of, this was a clean bowl. And this was clean form, and you're expecting, oh, here we go again. We're going to have trash talking, all the garbage in the house. And then he's like, you know what? I think we're going to have to fight today. You know, and, and you saw it was just a very laid back, relaxed atmosphere leading up to it. But it, this is clearly the greatest season the Ultimate Fighters had. I don't even think it was his bowl. I think he was just there. Just they were making the that joke. Yeah, they're making the joke. Like, you eat, oh, you ate out of my bowl? Oh, we don't have to fight. You know, and just to be that relaxed, to be uh, uh, that comfortable with each other, still share that camaraderie when you're in the house. Um, it, it's something special. We're seeing it right now. But this week, Team Sonnen gets the victory, a.k.a. Team Darkside. They move to 5-2 and two in the tournament. Is this a case of just the luck of the picks, or is Chael Sonnen outcoaching John Jones? There's no question about it. Chael Sonnen is outcoaching John Jones. Chael Sonnen is the greatest coach that has coached on the open side. There's no question about it. You know, there was a lot of talk leading into this season. Why is Chael and John Jones doing this? Chael doesn't deserve a title shot. It's just going to be a garbage season. All you're going to see is Chael's, you know, silly bantering, making these rhymes and, and being the Chael Sonnen. Right. But that's not what you're seeing. You're not seeing the persona of Chael Sonnen. You're seeing Chael Sonnen. You're seeing the person that he really is. And that's the person that... That he is just, he really is. He's the best coach that we've seen. A lot of people don't understand that when Chael Sonnen goes into fight height mode and he starts talking his trash and making his outlandish, outlandish claims and, and, and jokes and on the attack, literally, that it's just that. It's an act. He's selling the fight. He's selling, he's selling himself. He's selling, you know, the whole thing to the people. But that's not who he really is. And like you said, now seeing this behind the scenes, we get a glimpse of who the man really is. We see his personality. Yeah, you, you were an old wrestling fan. You used to watch wrestling back in the days oh, the yeah. Monday Night Wars. Do you remember Scotty Riggs? <laughs> Scotty Riggs. Part, part, part of the, the American, American Males. Males. Of Buff okay, okay, yes, okay. yes, yes. He, he's a big... Oh, enemy. Scotty Too High! No, 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 that's, no. The other, that's the other <laughs> okay. one. But Sc <laughs> Scotty Riggs is a, um, a big MMA fan. Follows a lot. He interacts with us on Twitter. And he was like, you know, watching the season. Was, oh, what's up with Chad? I mean, he's not keeping it heel. He's not doing the thing. And it's like, well, that's not Chael. Chael is this really good guy. Like, every time I've met Chael, he remembers your name. He knows who you are. He's very polite. He, Chael is a good guy. And he was like, don't, don't tell me that, man. You're, you're ruining the, you're ruining the, the, the illusion that I have. And he was like, but Chael isn't like that. Like you said, hype mode. Different, it's a different person than you're seeing on The Ultimate Fighter. And I, listen... No matter what happens in the fight between him and John Jones, Chael Sonnen comes out a winner. Thanks, John. Um, also on the show, show we saw last week's winner, Josh Saman. He knocked out Tor Trolling. And if you remember earlier in the season, he told us all about a devastating injury he had. He said uh, he, he hurt his leg. It got worse and worse until eventually he had a blood clot. He had to go to the hospital. They thought they might have to amputate the leg. They saved him. But coming off his victory over Tor, he started complaining about similar leg pains and had to get rushed to the emergency room. Turns out he's okay, but the leg's still bothering. Jay, you've been in a tournament, not like the Ultimate Fighter, but still fighting every four weeks with Bellator. How important is it to stay healthy, and how hard is it to stay healthy when you keep on fighting? Yeah, definitely. Uh, not really the best guy to win for the sport. Uh, you know, the guy who's the healthiest is the contact sport. You know, taking the punch and throwing out there, even leading up to the fight, you know, sparring. So, you know, for me, I, I didn't spar my last fight. I had a broken arm going into the final fight, so I chose not to spar just a lot of drills and technique. And that's when I felt my shot. So a lot of guys in the tournament, so that's something to think about. It's just, you know, not as much hard sparring, you know, just more technique. Because, you know, it's so short. The fights are so, you know, they're so close together. Like, you know, even hard training is going to put, you know, training in the body. And 
you think too in the tournament when you do go in and you come out unscathed, at least you come out in a, in less than two minutes and knock your opponent out. You got to figure that's the best case scenario. But it didn't happen here with Josh. Still, in, in two minutes of fights, you could still get an injury that that jeopardizes your performance in the next round. Yeah, he may have won by devastating knockout, but he's the one that's taking the effects now. He's right. you know had to go and spend the day in the hospital. You know, re- just not only the the physical pain that he's going through, but the psychological Absolutely. anguish that it is. It's like. You know, did I just give everything up to, to participate in this tournament, to say goodbye to my family for six to eight weeks, and now it's just all blown away because of this, this problem he has. It's not even just him. It's a family issue where he's had blood clots in the past. It's, it's a sad situation for a fighter to deal with. And then moving forward, you know, how does he approach training? Is he like, I'm afraid to get a, take a shot on this leg? Does he go into, the, does he go into the, 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 the next fight without any sparring at all, any training? Or is he even unconfident to not even go in the fight at all, you know? My opinion would be that's the best way to go in. You know, stay, you know, definitely try to stay in shape. Um, I wouldn't try to limit the contact. You know, definitely keep your weight around where you want it to be and, and sweating and, you know, moving your body. But I would say, you know, the haze already in the born. You don't, you know, the sparring, you don't have to. <laughs> I love that saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, get, you're already in fight mode. Your mentality is good already. Just get out there. And do what you got to do on fight day. Yeah, one of the hardest things is having to just maintain the weight and staying in shape for the fight. Exactly. Well, one thing you just said that I really liked was mentality, and and it's it's such an important part of performing at your peak is having the right mentality. And you saw this week's episode we had uh, where where the UFC or where the organization took all the fighters to Hooters. They got a night out. They got away from fighting for the yeah. night. You know, but you saw Uriah Hall this season standout. He wasn't engaging in the fun there. When they were having moments, they were bringing everyone together to hang out. He was off to the side. He refused to, to, to kind of indulge in that. And, and when they showed the interviews, he was saying, I can't turn it off. Mm-hmm. I, I don't sleep. All I'm thinking yeah. is fighting 24-7. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I can't get it out of my head. Yeah. How important is it when you're coming to fight to turn uh, that stuff off, to have, the, to have the moments where you get the, the break? He's, he's going to burn out mentally. You know, thinking like that, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, thinking about fighting, thinking about one thing, anything. It doesn't even have to be fighting. You know, you need you need balance in your life. So, you, you know, you got to be able to turn it off when you leave the gym. You got to be able to turn it off after a fight. You got to take some downtime. You have to, you know, because it will catch up to you and, you know, you, you'll be mentally drained. So, you know, definitely you have to have balance. Um, I'm a big believer in that. Well, I hope he finds his balance because he is the star of this season so far. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's funny about this. I didn't mean to rhyme there, <laughs> but when I was searching uh, Uriah Faber to do some research about our interview with him yesterday, when I started typing in Uriah, you know which Uriah, you know which Uriah came up first. I'm guessing Hall. Hall <laughs> out Googled Uriah Faber, and it went Uriah Hall, Uriah Hall knockout, Uriah knockout, Uriah Faber. Wow. You know you've made it when you're topping Google with one of the weirdest names in Uriah Faber. <laughs> right, right. You, you mean, with such an odd name like Uriah, it's so unique. And, you know, forever, you type in you, you are, and Uriah is coming up. Right. For the first, wow. That day. So he outgoogled the California kid. Uh, next week's match on uh, episode 8 of season 17 of The Ultimate Fighter, Zach Cummings. He's the guy that knocked out Nick Fichetti in the first minute to get in the house, taking on Dylan Andrews. Dylan was the last pick guy on the show, but let me tell you something. I think this might be a dark horse. I think he, stylistically, the fight he had was just a bad matchup for him. I've seen this guy train. He's trained here. He's from New Zealand. He's friends with uh, Bryce Rutani Co. Out of, out of Extreme Couture. Trained with Ray Seffo. I've seen what he can do. I think he's got a lot more skills than people are aware of, and I think he's going to make a fight of it. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think you're possibly right, and I don't even know if it's going to have much to do with skill either. I think it, I think this all comes down to coaches with this season, the way they prepare these guys for the fights. I look. Well, team. Dylan's Dylan's team Jones. Oh, is T- oh Dylan? Oh, that's right. No, yeah, Dylan Andrews, team Jones. Um, no, I'm going to go with Zach Cummings. Then I got to go with Zach. Okay, I gotta. Uh, just, just out of coaching, out of pure coaching. Pure coaching. Yes, I got to right. go with Zach. We'll see. Well, tune in next Tuesday night, 9 p.m. on FX. If you're not watching lately, you need to. This is the best season. Um, Also, this past week, we had some Bellator action. Phil, give us the recap. Yeah, last night was another stellar show from Bellator. I mean, it had everything. It had the excitement. It had the drama. Crazy comebacks. 
and of course what we see at every fight uh, controversy. Uh, first fight of the night was um, on the first side of the featherweight semifinal where you had Mike the Marine Richmond versus Popo Bezea. Uh, it was 15 minutes of back and forth action. The first round, uh, Bezea took Richmond down, controlled him the entire first round. Second round, Richmond was able to keep the fight standing and just basically unloaded on him, landed a lot of nice jabs, bloodied up Bezea's face. Uh, third round was both of it was the same of each. It was a little bit on the ground, a little bit on the feet. Fight ended up going to a split decision. Uh, Richmond won, but I have no problem with the decision, and I have no problem if Bezea would have won. It was that type of fight. I, in my opinion, it was. It could have been a draw. I would have given the third round a 10-10. Wow. Yeah, it was that good, but it was a definitely a good fight. Nice, nice way for them to start off. Um, the next fight, okay, the next fight was a lot of fun. All right, this was the, uh, the middleweight semifinal, Dan Kramer. Okay, we talked about him the other day from Tough Season 7. He trains with ATT. He was in there with Brett Cooper, and he absolutely beat the piss out of Brett Cooper for two and a half rounds. All right, he, he dropped him in the first round with a nice shot controlled him, blocked every takedown. Every time they got in the clinch, he had a great Muay Thai clinch, gave him brutal knees to the head. And then in the third round, I don't know if Misha Tate was was uh, coaching Kramer <laughs> and told him to just coast, but he got oh he got rocked with such an uppercut. Like I told you earlier, his head looked like a Pez dispenser. Like it was like, you can. oh, it just shot up there. His head went back. Neck was like the whiplash. He's definitely going to be feeling it. Then he, uh, Cooper unloaded a few combinations and knocked him out. Big, big come from behind victory. And then Cooper was very emotional. We were talking about Mizugaki last week being emotional. He, he put Mizugaki's speech, blew it out of the water. Especially, though, you, you got to figure when you get beat that bad, it, it, you come in the final run, round, to end it like that, it's got to get the emotion stirring. Yeah, he, you know, and it's funny, too, because, all you know, Jimmy Smith, one of those guys telling you what, what's going on in the fight, saying Cooper needs to land the knockout to win this fight, and he did it. It was, it was spot on. Uh, controversy I was talking about came with Doug Marshall and uh, Sultan Aliyev. Uh, Aliyev, sorry, um... He pretty much, I think, won the fight. He controlled Doug Marshall wherever he went, and Marshall got the win. Split decision, but and Marshall, I think, was more surprised than anybody else that he got the win. And then in the last fight, uh, it was uh, classic BJJ versus Sambo with Marlon Sandro and Frodo. Frodo, man, that guy is a beast. Uh, I I'd like to try to say his first name, but I have too much respect for the man, and I do not want to butcher it. Uh, you can say the last name, though, is Kozbalov. That's not bad. Yeah, but the first name, it's, it's yeah. Magmo Red Rizal. Okay, not bad. Not well, bad. He, he had an early scare. He got clipped in the cup. It was, looked like he was in a lot of pain. Looked like the fight couldn't continue. But he did, and he, and he put a beat on Marlon Sandro, and he beat him uh, TKO in the third round. It was uh, definitely another stellar night for Bellator, putting on good shows. So next Thursday night, we have the middleweight and the... No, oh, next, no, next Thursday night, we are off. There is no Bellator next Thursday night. They'll be showing the road to the championship, breaking down all the championship fights in the next three weeks. Beautiful. Well, we got to go pay some bills, but when we get back... You guys right here, we'll have more with Jay Haran. Talk to Jake Ellenberger. Get Heidi's hit list and more. You are listening to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. The MMA Fight Corner. Las Vegas, national sports talk host JT The Brick now originates from the Fox Sports Radio 920 studios. Catch JT overnights at 10 on Fox Sports Radio 920. Hi, this is Billy Miller from the MMA Fight Corner Radio Show here on Fox Sports Radio. And I want to tell you about a great gym right here in Vegas that is helping me get into way better shape while teaching me to protect myself like an MMA. What's up, fight fans? Start seeing the world like you've never seen it before. Call LASIK of Nevada today at 636-2010. Consultation free, percent financing OAC, and check out the website, LASIKofNV.com. They performed over 50,000 LASIK procedures. Don't mess around with your eyes. In my opinion, Dr. Rothman's the best in the business, and today's LASIK can be safer and more comfortable than ever before. Hello, this is Dr. Rothman. Have you ever thought about what your life would be like with complete visual freedom? That means clear vision far away for driving and up close, too. I would like to invite you to experience something you never imagined was possible before, a free LASIK test drive. My highly experienced staff and I will actually demonstrate what your vision will look like after your LASIK procedure. So call us today at 636-2010 to see what you've been missing. 
Call now and receive 50% off premium LASIK and a free LASIK test drive. And when you test drive your new eyes, you'll receive something special to enjoy the ride. Call 636-2010 or visit them online at LASIKofNV.com. That's 636-2010. Dr. Richard Rothman, LASIK of Nevada. Sports Radio's most interactive show. This is JT the Brick with Tom Looney. Hey, it's a shame I can't pick my guy, Dale Earnhardt Jr. I can't do it anymore. I used to pick Junior all the time. He won one time in four years. <laughs> yeah, no. You can't make money picking Junior. You can't go around with a sports book and say, oh, this is the week that the stars are going to collide and Junior's going to win. Back against the wall. This is JT the Brick. I'm Looney. JT the Brick. Overnights from 10 to 3 on Fox Sports Radio 920. Yo, Steve Cofield here with a simple question. Who are you going to trust if you get hurt in an accident? Someone you see on TV but never get to meet in person? Hi, I'm Justin Watkins. Call 562-6000 today to meet me personally for a free consultation. As one of my clients, you can get updates every week on the status of your case. And you're given an email address for our entire personal injury department. Use this email if you're unhappy with any of our services. I'm confident you never will. Experience the Atkinson and Watkins difference. Call 562-6000 today. Stop! Stop paying too much interest on your title loan. Go to Fast Cash Title Loans where they're offering a 9.95% rate. While everyone else is paying up to 24% on their title loans, you can get one from Fast Cash Title Loans for only 9.95%. If you have a title loan somewhere else, Fast Cash will go with you to pay it off and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call 685-4100. That's 685-4100. Real estate is all we do. We can and will sell your house no matter how much you owe. Call me today at 255-1145. will be my friend. This is the Dan Patrick Show. <laughs> NFL.com reports the Niners unlikely to pursue Terrell Revis. You know, the reason why is $16 million per year. Do you really need him? Gary Myers, New York Daily News, wrote today that the Jets want to trade Jarrell Rebus because they don't want him to end up in New England. Interesting. Dan Patrick. It's the Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings at 6 on Fox Sports Radio 920. Hi, this is Ozzy Osbourne, the Prince of Darkness, but I need to get my fill of MMA, man. I tune in. to the MMA Fight Corner. Rock and roll! The MMA Fight Corner. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. We have ignition. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. Uh, yesterday, we had a sit-down interview with Scotty Jorgensen and former WEC featherweight champ, current UFC bantamweight Uriah Faber. They will be headlining the Ultimate Fighter Season 17 finale here in Las Vegas, April 13th. This is going to be an amazing fight. These guys, they go back and forth. They can punch, they can kick, they wrestle, and they do it at such a fast pace. But what really gets me excited about this fight, Phil, is that they're friends. They're, yeah, they're, they, they actually, I believe uh, Uriah used to coach uh, Scott in wrestling and kind of got him involved in MMA. He went down and trained with him for a bit, from what I understand. So I know that they have a very a, a good history with each other. And uh, it's going to be interesting, you know, when you see buds fighting each other. Well, here's a clip from our interview with Scott and Uriah on their familiarity with each other and whether the friendship will have an effect on their fight. The beauty of this sport is every day you step inside the octagon, it's, it's, it's a new fight. It doesn't matter what happened last week or, you know, two years ago or... What happened when he fought Barrow or when I fought Barrow? We're two completely different people. It's a completely new fight and it's a completely new day. So, you know, I go in there with the, the mentality that I'm ready for anything. You know, wherever that fight may go, I'll, I'm going to be prepared and ready to fight. And, I'm, you know, I know you're right. It's going to be the same way. So, I don't think either one of us are looking back at our past going, you know, he does this or he does that. You know, we're both expecting fireworks and going to deliver. So, yeah. Uh, you know, we'll find out whether there's an advantage or not when, when it comes fight day. And, uh, you know, I don't think so. I'm, you know, I, don't, I don't think it's going to have an effect. We've all also changed a bunch over, over the years as fighters. And so it's just going to be a new fight. Just like every fight, man, it's going to be a good one. Uriah talking about them changing his fires. But actually, Scotty says that he gives a lot of credit to Uriah Faber, getting him to the next level of mixed martial arts. Uh, let's take a listen to that. 
I was wrestling. You know, I was coaching at UC Davis. He, you know, we always talked. I was a big fan of MMA, and you know, he was fighting, so I was asking him questions. And he, one day, you know, he's like, you, sh- "You should fight. You should try it out. I think you'd like it. You know, you make a little bit of money and all this." And I finished my college wrestling, fought, loved it. Trained a little bit out there with uh, Uriah, his guys, took some fun. Signed on with the WEC, and, you know, that was it. You know, that's all I've done for the last, you know, six, seven years. So, um, you know, it was, it was big. You know, he introduced me to our management. You know, we share the same manager, a lot of the same f- So, did you guys hear that? Yeah, and I, I'll tell you, I'm you, you're so right with this. This is going to be such a good fight, and the history these two guys have, the, just the styles, it, it's just going to be a good one. Style make fights, and we you hear you can. heard him talking about them sharing a manager. They're also closer than that because Scotty actually told us about how Uriah messed up his proposal to his wife. <laughs> oh man, so I fought Albert when I was extra bonus money, and for the first time in you know I don't know like four years, I was going to go on a vacation where it was non-fight related, I was going to take my girlfriend off to Hawaii, propose, and had all these nice plans, and beach house set up, and all this stuff, and we're three days away, I get a call from the manager, from our manager saying, hey, you ready to fight, you ready, and I'm like, yeah, who, when, Uriah, April 13th, and I'm like, what? (laughs) <laughs> I was like, you kidding? He's like, no, that's it. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, I, I've never been one to pick my fights. She looked at me after I told her and goes, you can't go to, we can't go to Hawaii now. We gotta, you gotta get your ass ready for this fight. Like, um, okay, well, we can find a way to go. And it didn't happen, obviously. So she didn't know what was coming up in Hawaii. So we, I flew her down here to Vegas for a couple of days early to spend time with her family. I flew in later on Mon- or flew in Monday, got everything all set up, popped the question up top of the Cosmo, and now I can focus on this guy. So he still, he, she still said yes. He still got to propose, but uh, it, you know, it didn't happen in Hawaii. Well, it was at least it wasn't one of those like big daddy moments with Adam Sandler when uh, John Stewart was getting ready to propose. Whoa, whoa, whoa think about it. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Uh, and Uriah Faber, you know, he he's one of the top bantamweights in the world. I think on any given day, one of the top featherweights in, uh, in the world, you know. His losses have only come to champions and in championship fights of lately. And one thing that he has been getting, and it's really bothering him, is the media asking about retiring, if he's thinking about hanging up. So here are his thoughts on that. Yeah, it's just funny. I mean, I guess people have to ask about that kind of thing. Um, I've spent a lot of time in the last 10 years developing a skill set that puts me with the top fighters in the world. And, and we've got guys like Hanan Burrell is an example of that that have started since they're a little kid, probably about the same amount of time that I put in to develop a skill set to where he's at and he's coming in. And then you've got uh, all these other people that are coming in and, and developing skill, but I'm one of the top fighters in the world. I have a, I'm getting better skill-wise. My body feels incredible. Uh, I'm at a weight that's the most comparable for my for my body structure, and uh, there's no reason for me to even think about retirement. I don't see any reason either, especially no. not if that win over uh, Ivan Menjivar. Not, not at all, and, and you said it dead on. I mean, the only people he's lost to are champions or former champions or future champions. Listen, Uriah Faber, without a doubt, number two bantam behind Barrow and Dominic Cruz if he ever does come back. And as far as you know, featherweight, definitely one of the top featherweights in the world. Guy does not, nobody should be talking about Uriah Faber uh, retiring at all. Absolutely not. And another thing that I really liked that he had to say, Jay, you, you, you come out of Extreme Couture, you've worked with Randy Couture, you've heard Randy talk about this. He said, fight, he said practice is 80% physical, 20% mental, and fighting is 80% mental, 20% physical. And Uriah told us about the mindset and how that is the most important part of fighting for him. Yeah, well, I don't think it has changed that much other than we have more skill involved. For me, the the big thing with a champion, the mindset is, is number one, and you're not going to get guys with a tougher mindset than some of the champions that have been throughout, you know, been here throughout history. Guys like Randy Couture, guys like Chuck Liddell, you know, guys even, you know, Tito Ortiz and Mark Coleman, these guys were 
one sport athletes at one point, but were extremely mentally strong. And you're getting that same mentality with a new skill set. So that's that's a little bit different. But the mindset still went over a diverse uh, technical game. You know, if you have a strong, mental, mentally strong guy, and he's going against a guy who's not as mentally strong but has been training for a long time and knows some cool stuff, uh, I'm always going to go with the mentally strong guy at the end of a fight. Great stuff. Absolutely. <clears throat> Uriah gets it. You know, yeah, there's never most, been a question. Most, most definitely. The mentality of uh, this day and age in this game, you know, that's that's what's going to win fights. It's at that top level, those five-round fights, when you're hot, sweaty, bloody, tired, and you're third, fourth round going in, it's the guy that's mentally tough that's going to pull it off. You know? And both these two are mentally tough. UFC bantamweights Uriah Faber, Scotty Jorgensen, main eventing the toth, the Ultimate Fighter Season 17 finale taking place at the Mandalay Bay Resort here in Las Vegas, April 13th. You've got to come check it out. If you're in town, see it. If you're out of town, order the pay-per-view. Not only is that fight going to be amazing, but this is the best season of the Ultimate Fighter we've had in ages, if not ever. And the talent in this show in this season is also on par. So April 13th. Tough 17 finale at Mandalay Bay. You're not going to want to miss it. Absolutely not. And just you, you said it right there, Mandalay Bay. That's how big this season is. That's how big this fight is between these two. It's not being held at the Hard Rock. It's not at the Palms. It's not at the Tough Gym. It's at the Mandalay Bay. Big enough. Absolutely. Well, we were supposed to have a phone. Oh, we do. Awesome, 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 awesome. Joining us on MMA Fight Corner, UFC welterweight Jake Ellenberger. He'll be taking on former Strike Force welterweight champion Nate Marquardt next Saturday, the 16th at UFC 158. Jake, thank you for coming on the show, brother. How are you? I'm great, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. You're 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 a week out. You know, as 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 my buddy Jay Heron says, the hay is in the barn. The hard work's done. Hopefully, there's not too many bumps or bruises going into this fight. No, no, everything's going well, man. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm getting ready to uh, head out to Montreal. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm just enjoying it. It's going to be cold over there, huh? It is. I think, you know, I think it will be. You know, I'm actually, uh, I like Jay a lot. How's Jay doing? I, you know, I was really sad to, to hear the, the UFC release. I really like Jay. He's such a nice guy. Good oh. guy to train with. Jay's awesome. He's right here. Appreciate that. <laughs> What's up, bro? How you doing, man? We're, 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 we're rooting for you, bro. Do your thing. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're, on the, you're on the phone with me, Joey Varner, uh, Phil Devine, and Jay Huron. Joey. Yeah, what's up, brother? What's up, brother? <laughs> you didn't know it was me, did you? <laughs> I did. I knew you were back there. <laughs> hey, so you're coming from the you're coming from the West Coast, though. Are you rocking flip flops out there? How's the weather out there on the West Coast? You know, right now it's actually uh, kind of cold. It's been raining, but uh, it's just kind of weird weather right now. Yeah, we had a glimpse of summer last week and Tuesday, you know, it was like 80 degrees for three or four days. I started I started bragging about how awesome the weather is. I'm wearing flip flops and shorts, and now it's storming. We got snow on the mountain. I'm thinking I cursed us. <laughs> you really could have. Yeah, my luck. But moving forward, uh, you originally scheduled to fight Johnny Hendricks. Of course, he's a power punching southpaw, a, 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 a national champion wrestler. Late minute switch up due to the injury of, of, of Roy McDonald. They give you orthodox striker, well rounded fighter, Nate Marquardt. How difficult and it was that to adjust your training camp that late in it? You know, um, it really wasn't a big adjustment for me, you know. Uh, you know, my, I got I got to be prepared to fight, you know. And, uh, you know, some small, you know, small changes as far as strategy goes, but um, again, you got to be ready to fight, and, and uh, you know, I'm ready to fight. So I was really looking forward to to the Johnny fight. You know, obviously he's in a, a very good position right now. He's one of the top guys, but it is what it is, you know. So I have moved on, and, and uh, you know, there was no easy fight, man. There's no easy fight, so. Gotta be prepared for anything. Yeah, you were you were upset at, at the decision by Johnny, and it, you, you didn't really come out and say it, but it sounded like you know you kind of implied that he was almost ducking you by taking the Condit fight before you know they, they could have gave Marquardt to Condit. Um, is is Johnny Hendricks a fight that you still want, or is it more just about you you getting to that shot of the title? No, I, I do want it. I really do. I uh, you know he's a guy that I, I know 
very well, and I, I've, I've watched him quite a bit. So, uh, you know, it's just a fight I was really excited. And having prepared for so long, um, you know, specifically for him, it was definitely frustrating when uh, when that, that got pulled. But, um, you know, that's out of my control. Uh, you know, like I said, I moved on, and then we gotta, we still got to fight. March 16th, got to take care of business, you know. That's it. I just watched a a, a little uh, video clip the UFC put out about you, and, and they were, you were talking about you know the well roundedness of Nate Marquardt, how he does everything extremely well. How hard is it for you preparing for a fighter like that who does everything great? Um, you know, for me, it's always just been small things. You know, we got the small things I can prove on each fight, and. Uh, I mean, this guy, is, he's dangerous too. He hits hard. He's, he's pretty good everywhere. But, uh, as far as my stuff, what I got I to gotta be, uh, I know what I'm good at, and I really got to stay focused on, uh, you know, how I, what I got to do to win this fight. And, you know, it's really been prepared for, for anywhere it goes. But, yeah, I mean, Nate, uh, he's not from the best guys in the world. So, I, I really, it really hasn't really affected um, my training at all. You know, I'm focused on what I got to do to win. Well, talking about what you got to do to win, uh, in that same video I was talking about, I, I love this. I love this comment you had. Where you said, you know, you're not saying you're the best welterweight in the world, but you feel that you could beat any welterweight in the world. And with that mindset, what do you need to do March 16th to beat Nate Marquardt? You know, for me, I know my. You know, <laughs> you have these conversations in your head, like throughout training, and everybody who's ever fought knows what I'm talking about. You get on that edge and. You start to feel uncomfortable, and uh, you know, just being able to push yourself. It's, it's a real, it's a hard thing to do. To be able to, uh, you know, just be comfortable in that uncomfortableness, and I really, uh, I'm gonna have to push myself. You know what I mean? Control when this fight goes, and uh, really, and also the the distance, the range. I got to be able to control that with me, and uh, like I say, I, I can push myself. You know what I mean? It's, it's 15 minutes, and I gotta. I gotta push myself past that limit. <laughs> no, absolutely. And in Mark Court, of course, coming off a huge upset loss, losing his title in the last strike force to Safadine. Did you get to watch that fight? I did. I did watch that fight. What'd you think? Did you get any insights, any any glimpses into into things you see that you can use in your fight with Nate? You can tell us, we won't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh if I mean, you know, you can't really play too much into, into each fight because, I, I, you know, I know I'm different. Every fight, I'm a little bit different. I mean, everybody has certain things that go wrong, whether it's a little back and injury or, uh, you know, the personal business or, you know, whatever it may be. So I, I think everyone's a little bit different, you know, each fight. So um, I'm sure he's made some adjustments and corrected some things he made, you know, that he did wrong in that fight. So, uh, you know, I'm just... You know, I mean, you know, it's good to take into consideration and to see where he can be, um, you know, he can capitalize, but you just got to take it, you know, take it with a grain of salt. And... That's it. And speaking of taking it, <laughs> Nate definitely took a lot of those leg kicks, man. It, it got pulverized in that fight. And I remember uh, after John Alessio fought Tiago Alves, and I spoke to John, you know, he's out here with us, and he, and he told me it was almost two months for him before he was back to walking around 100%. And this fight is just taking place like almost two months after that, the the, 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 pulver, the pulverizing he took on that leg. Do you think he's fully recovered? Or do you think he's still going to have some, some wear and tear from that? Uh, I, I'm sure there's going to be some, you know, a little bit of uh, wear and tear there just because, you know, from, excuse me, from, from what I hear, it's, it's, uh, that's something that takes a, a long time to recover from. And, you know, potentially have, have uh, long-term damage. But, again, I, I don't really know. And <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it's, it very, very well could be uh, still be bothering him, but, I, you know, I have no idea. You'll find out You'll find out uh, a week from Saturday, huh? Right, if he shows up with a kid yeah. or not. Yeah. <laughs> Joining us on the line again, UFC welterweight Jake Ellenberger. Phil, what do you have for Jake? Uh, Jake, I got to ask you, what's, what's fight week like for you? Do you have any special preparations or rituals that you go through leading into weigh-in? Uh, not really. I, mean, I, just, really, I just try to stay as relaxed as possible. You know, kind of, I, I like to read, read watch movies, just chill, you know. 
I can play that. I don't want to be around a lot of people before I fight, you know. Well, that's something interesting. You've been you've been placed since you've been in the UFC. You've been all over the card. You've been on prelims. You've been in main events. You've been in the middle of the card. Does do you like or do you just dis- dislike the media attention that leads into fight week? Sometimes is it too much or is it? Are you okay with it? You know, I don't mind it. I, I think it's for me. It's like when you start dieting and you start uh you know, I, I get in a bad mood when I'm hungry or, you know, you get really anti-social and you don't want to get, you answer the same 27 questions you answer for three months, you know. Yeah. So how do you feel about Johnny? And, and it's okay. I mean, I, I, I get it. But, yeah, I get a little monotonous in the, in the week. But that week specifically, you know, when you're, when you're dieting and, and you don't feel so bad, you know, I should say, but it is what it is. It's, you know, I guess it comes to job. You got to do it. Yeah, it definitely does come with the job. And the bigger the sport gets, obviously, the more that, you know, more eyes are drawn to it and it's something that people have to deal with. But if you weren't doing fighting, if you weren't a fighter, what do you think you'd be doing professionally? Um, I, I'd probably be a pilot. A pilot? <laughs> a pilot. <laughs> now, does that come from your experience in the Marines? Is that something you always wanted to do? A little bit, yeah. I, I, not so much from the military, but I, I've just been fascinated with aviation for a long time, and, and that's something that I probably would have perceived if I, uh, if I didn't fight. You know what's funny, dude, is I can literally see you rocking that outfit. Absolutely. You look know, like you were made to wear that outfit. <laughs> Hey, and by the way, I would fly the friendly skies with you any day of the week if you were the captain of my ship. Joey would be your goose any day. You know it. You know it. I would help you keep up diplomatic relations with the Russians by putting them the bird. <laughs> that- Speaking of, you, you you actually, Jake, you've fought all over the world. Being a fighter, you've had that opportunity to travel the world. Where, where's where been your favorite place to fight? You know, to be honest, Las Vegas. I love fighting there. Yeah, you love Fight City, huh? Yeah, man. Fight Capital, I, I love it. I don't like going long, like overseas. You know, I've, I've fought in Russia. I've fought in Japan once. I've fought in Korea once. I've fought in Costa Rica. I've fought in Canada. I, you know, it's just like you gotta, you have that whole time, you know, you gotta adjust, jet lag, and it's just, it's hard to feel like, you feel great that week, you know, when you only got a few days to, 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 to try to adjust, but, uh, you know, I've always liked to, to fight in Vegas, you know, it's just, it's great that, and that's where I grew up watching boxing, and Randy, you know, Randy Couture in the UFC, and it's just, that's where, I, that's where it is, you know? Yeah, it's a special place. <laughs> Now you're you're a former wrestler and a wrestling coach, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I think I read that you've had to deal with the situation of a of a programming shutdown. What do you think of this whole deal with the Olympics and wrestling possibly being excluded from them in the future? Yeah, it's, you know, it's it's terrible, man. It's it's, uh, it's a little bit it's kind of hard to believe, you know, like being one of the oldest sports. Um, you know, in the Olympics, it's just a tradition. And, you know, every year we always look forward to our country, you know, representing the USA and the Olympics, and it's like, man, to not be able to have it. And, again, it's more for the future, you know, like, um, for, for kids to look up to that, you know, to be, want to be a national champ, want to be a, an Olympic champ, you know, a great medalist. And it's sad because, you know, I think that the, the sports gives so many people a lot of direction and, and uh, instruction in their life, you know. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's still kind of hard to believe, to be honest. Yeah, it, it is definitely sad, and, you know, we've talked about it. You see it with people that mix martial artists. Now you're seeing wrestlers doing it because it's happening. You know, wrestling saved my life, you know, or, or mixed martial arts saved my life. Karate saved my life. These type of things that teach you discipline, to see it being pushed to the side like this, it, it's really, it's a disgrace. Well, the fight ain't over yet, though. No, I mean, not yet. Not yet. It's don't don't count it out yet, man. There's, there's a lot of We're people. at an eight count, though. Yeah, We're in a standing no, eight I, right I, now. I think we might have got dropped in the first, in the, in the second round, but it's 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 a five-round fight. There's a lot of people who are upset about this, not just Americans internationally, a lot of people with power. So I don't think it's going to happen. I, I just see some sort of 11th hour saving coming, but time will tell. Um, and, and speaking of time, Jake, we're out of time. Brother, hey, I know how, how hard it is to have to do all these interviews all the time, especially when you're last week and you're tired and you're starting to cut weight. So we really appreciate your time. Before we let you go, do you want to shout out to any sponsors or plug your Twitter? No, I appreciate it. I actually like you guys. Most of the people in the don't really like but I do. I like you guys. Awesome. Um, Virus, actually, I want to thank Virus. 
actually sports performance brand. We have that a lot. Um, in Vegas, and in the, in the Vegas, everyone from Vegas and outstanding uh, from the Lane Training Center, and all the fans, you know, for making this visit. Beautiful. We'll go go to Montreal, kick some butt on March 16th. Jake Ellenberger taking on Nate Marquardt, UFC 158. Thanks again, brother. No, my pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a good fight, dude. I'm looking forward to it. it this whole the whole card, dude. It's welterweight heaven, dude. I could so see him as a pilot. Oh my god, I have this image in my head with just like with the jacket, the hat under his arm, you know. It, J- Jake Jake looks a little bit like my cousin Frankie. Cousin right? Frankie. Cousin Frankie. You know what cousin Frankie does? He flies jets for the Marines. There you go. <laughs> and he, and I'm, I'm when you were saying that, that's all I'm picturing is my cousin Frankie looking just like Jake in that outfit, sitting in the cockpit. I could see it. I know you'd be his goose. You know I would. (laughs) Speaking of gooses, let's get our own goose in here to give us the logo on the latest breaking MMA news. Heidi Fang with Heidi's Hit List. Ready for MMA news? It's time for Heidi's Hit List. guys the first thing we've got is UFC 159 at it about Johnny Brutal Bedford and Eric El Goyito Perez uh, that's on April 27th at the Prudential Center in Newark New Jersey uh, that's also the headlining light heavyweight championship bout between John Jones and Chael Sonnen there will also be the third women's match on that card for Sarah McMahon and Sheila Gaff and then for UFC 161 that's at the Manitoba uh, Canada that's the one where uh, the MTS Center on June 15th. We'll have Hernan Burrell versus Eddie Wineland for the UFC Interim Bantamweight Championship. Also added to that, Sean Pearson versus TJ Waldberger and Sam Stout versus Isaac Valley Flag. UFC 162, big news there with the UFC Middleweight Championship. Anderson Silva finally agreeing to take on Chris Weidman. Then we'll also have the return of Mark Munoz, who's back after a year layoff, and he'll be facing Tim Boach. That'll be July 6th in Las Vegas, Nevada, and the date has yet to be announced. For UFC 160, Alistair Overeem is out. He's hurt. He will not face JDS. That bout is canceled for the second time. Mark Hunt was going to fight him, and then he wasn't going to fight him. There's not really any solid news on that yet, but as soon as we know if that fight will either be delayed or if Mark Hunt will step in to face JDS, we'll keep you updated on that. That's all the news for today, guys. Wow. Beautiful. Not beautiful about Hunt uh, Hunt and and JDS. Didn't you say, though, on Tuesday when we were talking about it, you said, I would love to see. Get it ready, Armando. Oh, is, oh, he, Come on, drop it, Armando. You dropped it. You, you got it ready for me? Drop it, Armando. Drop it. <laughs> He's having trouble there. What? Oh, oh, there it is. You guys right here? Right here? What? No, Joe Stradamus. Drop that. <laughs> Joe Stradamus. You're never going to let that go. Come on, man. Come on, Armando. You got to let it go. <laughs> you showed me you had it ready. It's not play. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so anyways, yes, Joe jo- jo yes. Stradamus strikes again. I'm on point with my MMA predictions, brother. Well, did you know that Alistair was hurt, or was this just something you were interested in seeing this fight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, hey, man, I, I, I thought that this fight could be a very real- realistic possibility. Not not that the Hunt JDS would happen, but that, that Alistair... Uh, JDS wasn't going to happen. And and I don't think that Hunt, unfortunately, JDS will happen, though. I still don't. And I, I think, though, if I read correctly, I think Dana put the kibosh on that. Well, I think he nixed it. What From what I read on Twitter the other night, Dana wrote Hunt wasn't really a possibility and that Alistair and JDS would be moved to the summer. But then rumors started surfacing that Hunt turned down the fight. And, of course, Mark Hunt humped right on Twitter, and he was like, yo, you know I didn't turn down no fight. <laughs> yo, let, let, let's just let's, let's, let's be honest here. I didn't turn down anything. So then there was a fo- uh, another thing from Dana saying, call me, Mark. So I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully it gets – because if, if you called it the other day, it would be such a fun fight. Two guys that are going to sit there, and they're going to stand and bang with each other, and you got two guys throwing heavy leather. It'll be fun. Tell you what, man, I don't think that's a great fight for Junior Dos Santos. No, no, it's not. Stylistically, it's like, you know, he's he's in a shootout with a better gunfighter. Yeah. Basically what it is. You know what I mean? Mm. But I'll tell you, I, I, I was, I'm so back and forth when they announced Chris Weidman and Anderson Silva because for a long time I was saying, you know, that, that after Chael 2, that Weidman 
would be able to beat Anderson Silva. I started rethinking this, and, and I'm not so sure on that, man. And, and I'll give you my logic. Is first and foremost, I look at Weidman's record. The most impressive big name win to date. Now, granted, it was a dominating performance, but it's over Mark Munoz. Yes. And really, Mark Munoz, you know, he is an up and comer, but he's not a, a proven seasoned veteran, you know. And I just look at the de- the lack of depth on his record. Side note: Chris Weidman does have a knockout victory over tough season seventeen season sensation Uriah Hall, but um, but I just don't think he has faced that high level of competition as Anderson Silva. Another thing, though, is what's what's the weapon of choice for Chris Weidman? His wrestling. His wrestling. But when you go for three years straight or two years straight of training camps to fight two opponents in a row that are amazing wrestlers and your whole thing, your skill level goes to a whole other level. So I think that maybe a year ago or, or after the first jail fight, maybe, but two back-to-back anti-wrestling training camps, I think his anti-wrestling IQ, his takedown defense, his chain wrestling defense have gone to a different level. And and now I'm not so sure. Now I don't know if it's just going to be, if if be thinking before I was thinking maybe Weidman could pull this off too, there's not a chance in hell. Listen, on paper, when you talk about styles make matchups, and on paper, Chris Weidman has said it a million million times, and he's dead right when he says it. But it's on paper that stylistically he's a nightmare for Anderson Silva. But it doesn't count because you still got to have the fight. All right. And that's the one thing that you got to take into consideration. It's Anderson Silva. Right. It's Anderson Silva. He's the greatest fighter that's ever walked the planet. There's no question about it. There's no question about it. John Jones is well on his way to, to being number two, in my opinion. But if you look at when it comes down to the best fighter that has ever stepped into the octagon, it's Anderson Silva. Hands down. Proves it in, in, in time and time again. I mean, he he's demonstrated when it was on the line. He's got not just that that uh, that that amazing fighter ability, but that that championship quality. That that the eleventh hour when all hope seems lost, I will find a way to get the win. Yeah, and and be, aside from Chael, every single person that Anderson Silva has faced inside the UFC, he's made them look like an amateur. Absolutely, he really does. It looks like you got you know like the quintessential athlete going up against a school kid and it, it really is scary like you looked at the look at the Bonner fight uh, you know I know Bonner took it on short notice and whatever and it was down whatever he played with him for four and a half minutes and he's like okay it's time for me to walk out of here <laughs> well thank you very much we're out of time we want to thank Jay Haran for co-hosting Jake Ellenberger for the full interview remember get all your MMA news from MMAFightCorner.com check us out on Facebook go to our YouTube page check it out we got tons of videos behind the scenes action with MMA superstars follow us on Twitter at Fight Corner I'm Joey Varner follow me at Joey V MMA. follow Filthy Phil Devine at Filthy Devine Billy Mira at MMA Billy Mira Heidi Fang at Heidi Fang Jay Haran what's your Twitter? At Jay Haran <laughs> Once again thank you for listening and be sure to tune in Tuesday from 5 to 6 because it's like going to college for your MMA knowledge The MMA Fight Corner only on Fox Sports Radio 920